Thank you for viewing this presentation called The Art of Attributes. The goal is to help a community of interest to use attributes well. I've been working in the fields of attributes now for many years, and a few lessons have been gleaned that we, I hope to pass on. I want to begin by talking about uh, the distinctions between identifiers and attributes. Um, we want to avoid some deep order about attributes because this is a focused session. I'd like to look then at the intrinsic issues in sharing attributes, where the art of attributes is being practiced. Talk a little bit about the access control use cases, which are very important, and normative bundles of attributes. Um, there's a new and growing interest in topics like competencies, micro uh, degrees, um, other kinds of credentials, and how those kinds of um, badges um, relate to both attributes and verifiable credentials. And we'll close with a few observations and actionable items. Um, identifiers are one-to-one -one correspondence with this subject. That's the key aspect of that, of, of being an identifier. Um, when you talk about identifiers, we often talk about whether that connection of the identifier to the subject is a well-vetted one, especially in the case of humans. Um, whether it's reassignable or not, can that uh, uh, email address be reassigned uh, to someone else? Um, um, and then uniqueness, identify as one-to-one, -one, but it's within a particular uh, domain. And so how do we describe that? Um, there's a set of characteristics about attributes that are um, increasingly under discussion, especially in CNI circles. Um, there's um, conversations around um, anonymous attributes, uh, um, pseudonymous, I'm sorry, anonymous identifiers, pseudonymous identifiers, the identifier that you often see on a screen that could be your display name, and then some new privacy preserving approaches around pairwise distinct identifiers so that correlation attacks are minimized. Um, it should be noted that identifiers are used in other parts of the stack um, beyond the particular dimension we're looking at. For example, session IDs are used by web uh, sessions and web fingerprints are often used, um, not um, particularly uh, with integrity, to track users between sites. Um, attributes, on the other hand, um, are often one-to-many. Um, um, and usually that one-to-many aspect, once a, one attribute can be shared by many different subjects, um, um, gives you um, a lot of benefit. Um, um, in um, um, privacy and security. Um, it gives you access control at scale, both fine grain um, to individual uh, pages on the wiki, for example, and coarse grain to the resource, the wiki itself. Um, attributes can provide personalization. Uh, they can uh, serve to um, um, offer compliance and regula regulatory um, benefits to an enterprise that wants to, uh, that needs to comply with these kinds of rules. And finally, um, as, as just mentioned, um, attributes can be used um, as skills and competency and certifications. And having those kinds of attributes um, is uh, very useful in an increasingly online world. Uh, some things we're not going to talk about today. We're not going to talk about the level of assurance about the value of an attribute. How confident is either the relying party or the uh, issuer of that uh, attribute to that subject 
how confident are they of, uh, of that binding? Um, the shelf life, how long is the attribute good for? Um, and other metadata type concerns about the attributes. Uh, right now, uh, they're best handled out of band. Uh, we're not, we're not going to talk uh, as well about re-identification of a subject from attribute aggregation. That's one of the important considerations, especially in um, epidemiological research. Can um, a, um, a set of characteristics by themselves identify uh, uh, a subject even if no one uh, uh, attribute is unique to that subject. They talk about bucket sizes, and in this case, how many subjects have this collection of attributes, and that's an important consideration. We're not going to talk about that. Um, we're not going to talk about um, the syntax of attributes either. Um, um, it's critical. It's pretty well understood. Um, it just needs to be paid attention to. If I'm going to be sharing attributes um, between an identity provider and a resource, for example, um, or between a user and a relying party that wants to validate that that user has that attribute, um, a couple of things need to, to be addressed. Both sides need to agree on the shared meaning, including those metadata issues that I talked about earlier. Um, there needs to be permissions um, to move the attributes from um, the holder of the attribute um, to the relying party. Uh, that's often done with uh, either consent or legitimate interest. Um, there's the method of actually moving the attributes, several protocols. Um, LDAP is the longstanding directory uh, protocol to move those attributes. SAML and OAuth tokens became the federated vehicles for transporting attributes. And finally, the verifiable credentials um, are a new vehicle. They're standalone. Um, they can be can carried on a, a smartphone um, as the transport and then conveyed to the uh, relying party that way. You want to make sure there's security and privacy of the transport. You want to make sure that the uh, the relying party um, believes in what they've received. Is it meaningful and untampered? Um, some of those earlier considerations, as we mentioned, but is whoever issued this credential, especially in the badges instance, um, authorized to issue those kinds of badges to those kinds of users? Where is all this happening? It's on hap happening on campuses daily for both on premises. Um, applications and software as a services. It's happening in both in institutional and interinstitutional um, instances. In the interinstitutional instance, it's particularly important that privacy considerations get addressed. Um, one particular conversation is going on um, in the seamless access contract language to translate um, bundles of attributes into. Uh, the contracts that libraries often have with uh, content providers um, to reflect um, uh, these bundles of attributes. It's happening in REFEDS, uh, the Research and Education uh, Federation community. It's international. Um, they're the holders of such schema as EduPerson, happening in IMS in some of their badging work. And then within big research collaborations with complex access control needs, there is the constant discussion of um, moving attributes around. Um, to move attributes, you need to have both institutional and individual uh, controls of the attribute release. You'd like the user control um, to be effective and informed. You'd like there to be a measure of institutional control. One interesting use case is what we call negative permissions. If a user is not permitted to use a service uh, like a VPN, you'd like to be uh, have that information communicated to applications such as VPN providers that um, 
um, need to know that information and consent should not be at play in that. Um, and then finally, um, the institution can reduce friction in the user experience, um, sometimes at the sake of user control um, by knowing what the relying party needs in terms of attributes. Um, one tool um, uh, that I, I've been working on with Duke um, uh, for a while now is called CAR, Consent Informed Attribute Release. It's an open source protocol neutral example of tools that integrate institutional and um, user control um, for permissions to release attributes. And finally, um, there's a concept in this space that we don't quite understand yet in our community around data minimization. What does that really mean? Um, when do you know what's an attribute, an attribute is required by the application versus optional? Um, you can see that other verticals have done this already. Um, the advertising vertical in response to GDPR uh, rulings uh, from the EU have uh, created a new uh, set of cookies. Uh, and um, there are four bundles, and I'm sure you've run into it in your web browsing, and you need to consent to uh, all the bundles. Um, speaking of bundles, they're often used together for common purposes. Uh, um, um, sometimes the bundle will dictate what the IDP release, sometimes it will dictate and inform it, an SP about what it should ask for. And then finally, it can trigger end user consent mechanisms. Um, bundles of attributes have proven to be tricky because um, there's a fair degree of semantic play in the federated ecosystem and campuses have different policies uh, that might make an identifier non-reassignable on one campus and reassignable in a different institution. So because of that, we need to, in our bundles, um, talk about either or choices, depending upon how the institution manages its identifier, identifiers. Same concepts apply to uh, words like um, edu-person affiliation, um, staff versus uh, student. Um, faculty are called staff in the UK. Um, the primary bundle widely used today um, is research and scholarship. Um, it's intended for uh, federated login user uh, uses for researchers. It has a set of attributes associated with it and um, those get released if an institution or user chooses to release to that. There are conversations going on now in the refeds community about two new attribute bundles and anonymous authorization and a synonymous one that are of interest to the CNI community. Um, we started uh, federations and federated identity for uh, access controls. Um, um, we were in a space uh, where uh, when we started that, you would list a set of identities about who could access a, uh, a resource that quickly became unscalable um, and insecure as individual identities lost permissions, but the access control list would not um, manage. We moved into role-based, much more scalable, not fine grain enough. We came down to attribute-based as, as basically the best way to do access control that creates management challenges for the institution. And so, we're moving up a level, if we can, to policy based saying these policies dictate the release of these attributes. Those attributes typically are edge person affiliation, entitlement, and is member of. Affiliation, um, it's coarse grain. Um, those are the values it can take. It has coarse semantics, and the institution will decide the assignment uh, of values. Um, and it works. That's important. It's widely used. Edu-person entitlements are uh, much more sophisticated. They uh, give a syn uh, uh, an extensible syntax for community-centered semantics. 
So a community that wants to control access to a, a resource with something fine grain like a major or class membership or a citizenship, um, all of those are, are, are possible. Some of those values may only exist in the communication on the wire between the identity provider and the relying party. Others may um, uh, be directory services. This will be fertile ground uh, over the next few years as we get into access control. Finally, as member of, it's a great device for um, uh, doing um, group memberships, which are very, very handy. Unfortunately, when we talk about um, is member of for the purpose of, sh uh, of access control and sharing that, it's a multivalued attribute in extracting, extracting the group memberships that are important for this particular use and not um, sending the others is tricky. Um, there's growing interest in micro degrees, badges, competencies, um, um, great use cases ranging from um, skills in a chemistry class, individual skills, to first responders needing to have their uh, credentials um, for various competencies authorized on the scene. Um, <clears throat> Uh, it's important to make those um, um, assertions uh, composable, so you can do complex logic and give a true false answer. Offline validation in case the environment does not have um, internet access, uh, um, which is frequently the case in these, uh, in these use cases. Mobility to be able to carry these kinds of credentials around on a mobile device. Unfortunately, verifiable credentials, as attractive as they are, are suffering from lacks of, of standards in the wallets that contain them, lack of standards in who can issue them, and user identifiers contained within the credentials, and how are they bound to the subject. A few observations. What's turned out to be really important is on the wire and the mapping of local to on the wire values. With new attributes, you typically wanna make the space of values they can take extensible. You'll anticipate a, uh, a set of use cases and new ones will arise. Um, as I mentioned earlier, entitlements are underutilized as a privacy preserving mechanism. As a community, if you want to try to do access control in a distributed fashion, um, entitlements are an excellent tool. Um, it seems almost uh, uh, tragic that some technologies like decentralized identities, which are very attractive, seem to not be able to converge on standards, something about the technology and the people that practice it. We have not yet reached fine grain attribute use. It seems challenging. And finally, um, anomalies are going to happen in this environment and access control. It's going to be unfortunate that um, um, important library resources, um, what attributes are released to them may depend on how you get to them. If you go directly, it might be um, um, one, one uh, set of attributes. If you're going through a portal, that portal may ask for additional attributes as part of its portal nature. We have to be careful about those instances. Finally, actionable items for the CNI community. Um, we've talked about attribute release at the institutional level. Invite your participation in that. Um, it's an important point for privacy. Uh, we don't have a taxonomy uh, for the purpose of use in how the relying party may use the attributes it receives. Um, the advertising industry has been able to do that. Can we create one? Um, portals are, are a growing trend, um, but they represent many different resources behind them. How do we know which attributes um, a particular resource uh, needs um, and only pass those um, uh, um, through the portal to the end user? 
the portal um, shouldn't ask for everything that anybody might need behind it. Um, as mentioned earlier, we need community standards um, to help us figure out what's a required attribute versus an optional attribute for an application. And finally, there's a conversation going on about distributed, uh, about reporting utilities in a federated world for libraries. Uh, please participate if you find that of interest. Thank you for your participation. <laughs>